Hello, everybody, and welcome to Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy, and I am down, I've been down nasty style sick with um, the most uh, recent uh, crappy thing that's been circulating around lately. Um, it's practically been an epidemic. Um, I personally haven't really seen um, the news say anything about it one way or the other. Um, in fact, I've only heard people talking about how the news isn't saying anything <laughs> about any of this. But, um, yeah, it's, um, I, I haven't been anywhere near this sick since, um, like, 2012 or so. So it's, it's been a bit. And, um, so, yeah, also, you know, with the intention of to, you know, continue promoting the idea that being real, raw, and authentic is, you know, always the best way to go, um, you know, no pretenses here. I look like shit. I sound like shit. Um, my bed is a medicated disaster, so to speak. I mean, we've got, um, you know, all the, all the, all the different various things that one might, uh, put on their bed when they can't leave it for the better part of the week. So, yeah, the, a couple of days ago, was like seriously the second worst pain that I've ever felt in my life. The the worst pain um, would be kidney stones. Um, wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, maybe people like George Soros, but I don't know. Not even that. I'm I'm not sure. Just send them off to an island in peace so they can go kill themselves. But any, um, yeah. So. My thought processes are not very clear, so I'm going to do the best I can. And there's, of course, the extremely high risk of me just suddenly, spontaneously interrupting myself with um, massive amounts of coughing. Yeah. And um, with some of the energy that I have actually had, what... To whatever little or whatever extent that it may be. Um, people have been commenting on Facebook and wishing me well, and one person came to me with something called the Master Cleanse. Okay. Here that shit is right there, the Master Cleanse. Um, all you need it to know to find it is see that like like funky looking tree thing there. Yeah, that's pretty much how, how you know you've uh, come to the right documentation. And it's a uh, it's a PDF file, and you can just do a Google search. Um, the Master Cleanse Stanley Burroughs. Um, Stanley Burroughs is the original author. S T A N L E Y. Uh, B U R R O U G H S. Now I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm not prescribing anything. I'm simply just stating the fact that um, someone shared a piece of information with me, and it's just interesting data in my opinion. Um, you know, don't blindly believe or disbelieve any of it. Obviously. Um, some of the things in here are injected with the author's opinion, others are facts, and even for some of the things that might sound like opinion that actually might even be fact, you still got to kind of take it with a grain of salt and some as opinion. But, um, Starts off with the idea that mind, body, and spirit has to have to be in harmony, otherwise you're going to have disease and dysfunction. Um, but for me, that's just kind of one of those not so common common senses, and there's really nothing um, mystical about it. Um, if you're out of whack and dysfunctional, shit happens, and that's not rocket science for me. <laughs> So, yeah, um, 
and it goes in and talks about how to alkaline the body and how viruses work and things like that and how viruses they kind of are and aren't what we think they are um you don't catch a virus in the in the way that um people think that you catch it viruses and bacteria and stuff is is always going in and out of you all the time um it's just that when your immune system and your your body health and all that is is exactly where it should be and um we're not doing stupid shit to ourselves then um these little bottom feeder viruses um they're only supposed to eat tissue that um is dying dead or in some way um damaged or just uh, not right when needs to be removed and is beyond repair so the more we abuse ourselves and abuse our bodies and we're putting in inadequate uh, building materials for the body with uh, you know what we eat and how we deal with ourselves then um more and more of our bodies fall within the compatibility of the uh, food source of these viruses unfortunately um because when we use these inefficient um substandard uh, materials <laughs> you know the corporate food system instead of nature's food system um you know the more we do that the more we get toxins into us and everything else because another thing um what most people don't realize is that things like infections and funguses and things like that they are our body's attempt at um quarantine toxins so so that they don't hurt us even cancer is the body's attempt at quarantining toxins so that they don't hurt us but the problem is is that when we're so damn low dead with toxins and you got freaking cancers and funguses and all sorts of stuff going crazy and well well you have all of that that weakness in the body you know all sorts of of other things can just jump right in all sorts of different um bacteria and flus and and just you know all sorts of different things can can start multiplying because it's not like they weren't in the body to begin with and then all of a sudden like some magic door opens up and visible quantum door that just floods viruses into your body no um the viruses were already there it's just once you become in, in a weakened enough state um certain viruses can start to breed um more readily and um obviously um when those uh, viruses breed um viruses just like um any other cell um they take in um nutrient to sustain themselves they take in whatever their food is and of course they excrete waste so they they go to the bathroom in your bloodstream so now you've got neurotoxins added onto toxins because viruses shit and piss neurotoxins they totally do um so yeah it's like there's all these different things that that come together i always say reality is a cake and not a light switch but there's all these different things that that come come together i want to i want to remain leaning back i want to video of me here so let me try to adjust that okay cool hopefully that's not looking so awkward now but anyway so all these things they come together um you know to form the cake of the situation everybody's always looking for the one singular universal cause to everything um you know whether it's the holy grail of religion or the holy grail of politics or the holy grail of medicine um we just have this these crazy ideas that there's one universal answer to you know like life the universe and everything 
and that to say otherwise is ridiculous and delusional and quackery and conspiracy theory and whatever. Um, to me, absolutism is stupid and it's destructive. It's like stabbing yourself in the eye. But hey, me saying that makes me the fundamentalist in the eyes of the fundamentalists. We see the world as we are, not as it is. So anyway, because this is just spreading, freaking through, and also knowing that these, these viruses are already in us, I don't necessarily think that it is the viruses themselves that um, is the problem check this out like you know the old saying like oh don't take don't take a, a shower and then you know walk outside on a really cold day all soaking wet and you know you're not bundled up and da 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 because you know you could catch a cold well you're not actually catching the cold by doing that what it is is because um, you just came out of a nice warm shower and you're soaking wet and then you go outside into that nasty cold environment It puts your body into shock. It's it's literally doing damage to your body Which then lowers your resistance Which then those those cells that those extra cells that get damaged and killed um, basically that that just sounds the dinner bell for the viruses that are that are already in you that have you know that have been kept at bay that just rings the freaking dinner bell soup is on and the more those those viruses can eat um, the more they can build and multiply and become a greater and greater problem for you until you can you know build your um, resistance back up and you know what your own internal army <laughs> your immune system you know finally go to war with it and, and defeat it and when it defeats it it's not that it's eliminating all of the virus completely as if oh it's no longer there that's not what it's doing it's only eliminated the extra bulk of the virus that has created the problem in the first place. Once the virus is down to more manageable levels, it stays. And it goes and it stays and it goes and others stay and others go. Because you've got, you know, just everything floating around in the, in the air, in the water, in your body. And... If we didn't live in such a toxic freaking society, um, the natural functions of viruses and bacteria and things like that are not only evolutionary boosters, but um, also bottom feeders. I mean, you know, think of like, like, like the bottom feeders um, in a fish tank. And hell, when it comes to mucking up our bodies. Um, Let's let's look at a let's look at a dirty turtle tank, um, just as a good example analogy. Um, obviously, most of you who would watch this video are probably going to have enough common sense to figure out that the way to keep turtles from dying in a dirty turtle tank is clean the fucking tank. I mean, I didn't really say anything like revolutionary or radical here, did I? Oh my God, clean the dirty turtle tank and the tur turtles won't die. Holy shit, did I just say like some crazy conspiracy theory? Did I just say something so outlandish and, and way out there that I should just be thrown in the nut house just on principle? Guess what? I did. You know why? Because... Replace tr dirty turtle tank with dirty unhealthy body. Imagine our bodies as like being the turtle tank. Um, instead of doing right by our bodies, instead of cleaning our bodies in the way that they need to be cleaned, you know, through health and through nutrition and through 
all of you know all of the uh, the, the methods that are healthy for actually cleaning the body and keeping it healthy what we do is we say oh well 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 fuck all that I don't want to do all that because um, I want to eat 10 pounds of sugar a second until I fucking die because it's it's damned convenient for me to do so and I want to stuff my pate in my face with 85 pizzas a fucking week because that's what society told me to do and they're my gods and I I worship my societal gods if they if they the commercial says that that pizza is yummy and I need to have that all the time then then damn it well fuck everybody else they're conspiracy theorists you know Domino's pizza they're the authority on on the world right um, so we do that shit and then on top of it when we start to get sick we take poisons right and then we take poisons to mask the side effects of the poisons, and then more poisons to mask those side effects. And like, you know, we've literally become a world of of, of drug addicts, like worse than the criminal kind. I mean, seriously, it's like mo most of the uh, the pre the prescription stuff out there. I worry way more about that shit than the illegal stuff. I mean, if you just look, if you do a Google search and look at, look at all the different um, lawsuits and things for all these different um, chemical poisons um, that are not even really tested, like it says FDA tested, approved, whatever. Not really. They just push it through. They want to make money. They don't care. And you know, it's like this is this is out there. You know, this is uh, this is not new. There's, you know, you can look up all the lawsuits and shit. Lawsuits aren't conspiracy theories. They're on fucking record. If there was a lawsuit, there was a lawsuit. If there's 10,000 lawsuits, and guess what? There was 10,000 lawsuits. And you could call it a conspiracy theory all you want. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. Um, but that doesn't make you right. And that doesn't uh, make the 10,000 lawsuits wrong. You know, so um, I would say you gotta put things into perspective here, but you really don't gotta. I mean, I'm not your boss. Um, you can just stick to whatever inane belief systems you want if you want, however self destructive that might ultimately lead to your demise if you keep doing stupid shit by yourself. What? Hey. So, anyway. This recent bit of contamination here, I don't, I don't think that that um, it was, it was a virus in and of itself. I think the virus material has already been in all of us. I don't, I don't think that any of us quote unquote caught it. I think there was some sort of other catalyst that was, that was released um, that acts equivalent to the uh, proverbial taking a shower and then going outside when it's real cold. In other words, something was put out to lower people's resistance. I don't know what that something is, or it might have been multiple somethings. You know, I mean, I don't know what it is, but um, a lot of us have gotten our resistance lowered all of a sudden. And I'm not exactly sure why or how. I mean, I suspect that, you know, some corporation for money is pulling something sneaky because we are all guinea pigs for the corporations and um, they basically have all the lawmakers broad so they can get away with anything with impunity, basically. Happens all the time. Just like how, and boom, before anybody says, oh, that's just a nutty conspiracy theory. Well, what about environmental pollution? Because that falls under the same category. Um, is it a conspiracy theory to think that all these po polluting companies that dump all this toxic waste and, and stuff and rivers and oceans and all of that that get fined tons of money, um, is that a conspiracy theory? Does that never happen? And do the fines stop these corporations from doing it? No, those fines are chunk change. Those, those fines are like the legal system um, asking you for a penny like, oh, it, it would be like saying, uh, uh, like the legal system comes to you and says, well, you did something that really did a lot of major harm for the, to the environment, so 
you're going to have to pay for it. Your penalty is a penny. You'd laugh and hand them the penny and keep doing what you're doing, right? So that's the situation. It's it's the same with Big Pharma. It's the same with all the different chemical companies. It's it's the same with all these big corporations. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude or offend anybody. I mean, I, I know coming off as rude and offended. Some people is inevitable, you know. As um, Paul Joseph Joseph Watson, to, to quote Paul Joseph Watson, um, half of you are going are going to hate me no matter what I say. <laughs> he actually put out a very, very interesting video lately too. Um, Paul Joseph Watson is not very happy with Trump. <laughs> um, and I think that's wonderful. Because the whole, all of politics, the whole system is a pool of diarrhea. Okay? So no matter who jumps into the pool, they're going to get covered in shame. And that's been my view of politics since I've woken up to more of how the world actually works. And um, it will always be my view of politics. It's why I don't vote. <laughs> Because once you realize that all sides are the same side, what's the point? You know, it's like, um, it's, it's basically like a nation of toddlers voting for which pedophile is going to get to rape them 18 times a day. And that's our system. And I'm, I'm I, you know, I meant that may be metaphoric, at least in some ways, but... It's not inaccurate, you know. Metaphor is a useful tool for expressing valid points. So, okay. I personally think that um, anybody who actually believes in the political system, that those are the conspiracy theorists. Me personally, I think that um, that it is a really big, crazy conspiracy theory to think that a two-party system means everything's fine and nothing can can go wrong the faith in the system itself is the conspiracy theory to me it's like it's like it's like having a conspiracy theory about fairies and, and pixies and santa claus and the easter bunny and magical unicorns and force fields and how all of these Magical beings through God and, and the angels do all this benevolent, wonderful, magical stuff within protecting politics and making it so so evil within the system just can't happen at all. And this is just what a lot of people believe, unfortunately. It really is. You know, Trump supporters think Trump can do no fucking wrong. Hillary supporters think Hillary can do no fucking wrong. Except pick your pick your politician in any position. It's the same thing. So you know, it's it's just like I firmly believe that if Hillary had gotten in and done these exact same freaking actions um, that that Trump just did in Syria, that all the Trump supporters would be like, "Oh, how terrible! How terrible!" And right now, most of the Trump supporters are praising his actions. Um, at least until they find out some of the finer points that Paul Joseph Watson has discovered. Um, then after they get over the cognitive dissonance, they might not be so rah, rah, hooray, hooray. We'll see what happens. It's very interesting. But back on track here with the viruses and all of that stuff, yeah, I'm, I've been feeling absolutely terrible. <laughs> I think I'm finally starting to recover and pull out of it a bit, but oh my god. Um, I haven't eaten hardly anything in literally a week. Um, the first day is a bit of a bitch, but after that it's actually pretty easy to not eat anything. And I've been drinking... No, not alcohol. Um, Aquafina bottled water, 
which um, just so you know is on the non-fluoridated list and you can even buy it real cheap on Amazon too. So um, if you want some bottled water that doesn't have the uh, poison Mickey in it, well, then, uh, that's definitely uh, going to be one option that you have and it's an option that um, ever since I've been able to drink more than just a sip at a time that I've been basically chugging. Ah. Yeah. In Chicago, where I am, the tap water is actually fluoridated. So even ever since I was a little kid, um, the tap water would always give me an upset stomach. So I really had no tolerance for it anyway, which that's always been a good thing. So I typically know when water's got some, some shit messed up with it because my, my stomach tells me in degrees of pain. Mm. <sighs> yeah, this... um. Whatever the heck it is that's specifically ailing me here has been so um, harsh that I haven't even been able to drink uh, juice in a tribe. Um, so it's basically I've just been on nothing but water. Aquafina, pure water, perfect taste. Purified drinking water. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff, actually. Oh. <clears throat> oh. And definitely good for keeping yourself cleaned out well in recovery. Oh, and uh, speaking of cleaned out, cleaned out, I know. Not eating much solids and only doing the liquids. I know, for those of you who have managed to stick around in the video this far, you're probably going to have the obvious question of, has this caused me like a lot of diarrhea or anything like that? The answer is no, not really. I've gone number two three times uh, within the last week, and um, I'm not going to get too graphic here, um, but the first time was solid but mushy. Um, the next two times were liquid and solid, but not, not excessive. It wasn't like... It wasn't like, you know, like that full-blown diarrhea, like where, you know, we've all experienced that, acidic and painful and just crapping out tons of water into the toilet as our buttholes burning, like feeling like the fires of hell and everything else. No, no. I didn't have any anything like that. So, you know, for any of you who are wondering, because maybe you might be in a similar situation yourself with your various illnesses and whatever whatever's going on with you and you're thinking of drinking lots and lots of water but you're worried like oh man I don't want to have diarrhea and have my butt hole burning it's like well I can't promise that that won't happen but I can only tell you that at least in my instance it didn't happen. I mean I, I you know everybody's body's a little different obviously so I can't guarantee for anybody. I can't be like, oh yeah, just just shut down like a motherfucker, you know, no diarrhea risk there. I can't say that. But I can say that it didn't happen to me this time. So I must be doing something, right? Oh. Mm. I also think, in my opinion, another part of the reason that my resistance lowered is because over the last few months, I've just been having a lot of increasingly compounding stress coming at me from 
a lot of different areas. I'm not going to go into the details, don't worry, I'm not a drama whore. Um, but I think I just, I wasn't giving myself enough permission to like chill. I mean, yeah, obviously I work from home on my various projects and stuff. I've got, um, you know, the PSEC channel, obviously, and I've got the Pondscape channel, and I've got my indoor pond, my outdoor pond, and, you know, I don't do, like, the whole 9 to 5 work thing. Um, I make money through multimedia and fish and ponds and, you know, stuff like that. I don't have a regular standard, you know, type of business, but even so, I think I was just, I was doing the equivalent of the whole workaholic thing. And really, like, and the more stuff started to pile up, not only the work I needed to do, but things family wanted me to get done and friends wanted me to get done. And everything just kept piling and piling and piling and piling and piling and piling. And instead of just taking, like, a one-week break without the getting sick part, um, I just continued to, to put pressure on myself, I think. And I think that, um, in combination with whatever else out there has affected me and everybody else that's getting, getting sick right now. Um, yeah, um, that just brought my resistance down, down to, you know, the breaking point. And you know, here's the consequences. So, like, I've got to own my part in that. So, like, when I talk about, you know, biological warfare and stuff of, you know, corporations making us guinea pigs and things like that, I'm not quote-unquote blaming them. They are, a, they are a contributing factor. And if you really want to be fair about it, the reason any of them are able to do any of the shit they do is because we let them. So... I'm, I'm just um, observing a configuration. I'm not trying to point blame because we are as much to blame as they are. Because we're, you know, we're all, we're all allowing. We're all, com we're all compatible with the nonsense. <laughs> we're complacent to the nonsense. And, you know... And I'm just down here um, stating stating all this also as, you know, I, I said that 2017 is going to be like my major stand against political correctness too. So, you know, everything I'm saying on here is basically politically incorrect as hell. Like, you know, the politically correct Nazis on, on all the different uh, <laughs> levels. I'm, I'm sure will not like what I'm saying. Um, especially because one of the things I'm going to be focusing more and more and more on is the, the political correctness that has taken root within and, um, corrupted, um, the new age movements and, um, truth movements. And I'm not trying to offend or insult anybody by saying that. I simply know that it's inevitable that I will offend and insult people am i saying that because hurtful truths are hurtful and they offend and they insult regardless of whether or not offense or insult was meant or not in my case it's not meant but it's still inevitable um because okay i'm not gonna like go into this big huge about it but just the basics okay Let's look at uh, the basic uh, New Age movement corruption. What they want, what they believe, and what they want everybody else to believe is that basically they have to live in extreme, terrifying fear and panic, total terror and fear <clears throat> of lowering their vibration. They always feel they need to be in protection against evil. Oh, I have to fear lowering my vibration. And this terrifying fear, this terrifying, paralytic fear that I worship as my God, this fear 
of lowering my vibration. You know what I'm going to call that? I'm going to call that love. I'm going to call that light. I'm going to call that positive thinking. And anybody who says otherwise is negative. A bad person. Lower vibration. Must shut up. Yeah. That's the new age movement. Now, that's not to say that the esoterics employed within the new age movement are wrong. They're not. A lot of them are extremely misunderstood and viewed through fuck tons of logical fallacies, you know, like treating the universe like it's the um, quantum version of a home shopping network, you know, or the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus or a God in and of itself. You know, uh, some of these people get a, get a little goofy with it. <laughs> yeah, so there's the distortion within the corruption within the New Age side of it. Um, within the truth movement side of it, I mean, you know, most of the truthers, they already know about the whole mind matrix thing, right? I mean, they've, they've spent... A lot of them have spent a lot of years studying about all of the exact psychological um, warfare um, mechanisms that have been deployed en masse. And um, they know very, very well um, all of the co-opting effects that that can have. And they know it very well when they're looking at anybody else other than themselves. Um, but when it comes to themselves, this is basically what they, what they say to people. They stand up and they go, and I'm going to use a metaphor first. I'm, I'm going to use cancer as a metaphor for mind matrix. So, yeah, it's, it's not too hard to follow. Try to keep up. Okay. So, basically, they're sitting there saying, okay, I am Mr. or Mrs. Truth Movement person here. And, um... I realize that I have cancer. And because I realize I have cancer, I am awake and I am aware. So that means magically. Because unicorns, for no reasons. Because pixies, because force fields, because Santa Claus. I am magically cured of my cancer because I know I have it. So this means magic, poof, abracadabra. My cancer is gone. So I can sit here and say that my cancer is gone. So all you sheep that don't realize that you have the cancer, you have the cancer. And you will die. And you are stupid. And you are sheeple. And ha ha, stupid sheep. Wake up, stupid sheep. Or me. I'm just so awake and aware and superior and not even the slightest bit narcissistic at all. No. Because I. Uh, the mind matrix would never affect me. No. I know about the mind matrix because I, I know about it. It means I am automatically immune. Like, I know about Obama, so that must mean he's going to drop that because I know about him, yes. You see how ridiculous this is? And then, because people refuse to look inwards and face their own fucking damage that society has done to them, and they won't heal their own fucking damage. They all end up at each other's throats, calling each other government chills and operatives and all this other stupid shit. You got, you know, a globe Earth versus flat Earth. And they basically fall for all of the false flag tactics and all of the psychological warfare tactics that they claim to be so high, mighty, holy immune. You know, um, they fall. They fall right for it. They don't see it because they're they're so focused on on defending a paradigm. They don't realize that this is how Hitler does it, folks. This is how Kierney does it. This is how Stalin does it. This is how Soros does it. This is how Obama does it. Pick your tyrant. Pick your regime. This is old hat. This is like thousands and thousands of years old. Very old hat. And the truth movement's falling for it. And what does this have to do with getting sick? Stress, people. When truthers act like that, 
Do you really think it doesn't take a toll on their bodies? They are helping the elites Agenda 21 themselves into an early grave. Hey, you know, a lot of people aren't going to like that I, ju that I just said that. I'm sorry. And by that I mean I'm not sorry, sorry, you know. But let's just say, I guess the correct words would be, it is unfortunate that some of you are going to feel that way. That's what I mean. It is unfortunate that some of you are going to feel that way about the things in time. It really is. Because it, you're just, you've just just been putting yourself through perpetual suffering, whoa. psychologically projecting blame everywhere and not owning your part in it. And you know, it's funny. When I speak passionately about something and just really, really deeply and just feeling about it, you know, um, a lot of times people will think that is me being arrogant and narcissistic. Well, I don't think I know better than everybody else. I already am fully aware that I'm just an equal human being to anybody else. Up here, just stating their opinion as respectfully as I can, knowing that no matter what I say, some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy, and I cannot change that. I did not cause that. Nothing I could do about that, so I may as well be at peace with it. And the more I move into that peace, the more, the more easier it's been for me to be able to be more authentic and say these sorts of things but without, you know, attacking anybody. Because in the past, I mean, I used to be the, you know, the same way as the truthers. I used to just attack anybody who didn't agree with me and call them stupid. That's what I did. That's where we start. But it's not where we all have to stay. So... Though I'm still feeling shitty with this cold or virus or whatever the, you know, whatever the hell up is up with this. Um, even though I'm still feeling the way I feel with it, I still feel a lot better than I did a few days ago. So for all of you who are also suffering with the same shit, um, you know, my, my, my intention and my prayers and, you know, Whatever word semantics anybody wants to use for that idea, depending on where their beliefs are. Um, all of that, from me to you, goes out because um, I have much compassion for your situation because I literally empathize with your pain in the most literal possible ways. <laughs> so, um, you know, I hope we all get well soon. And... Um, I'm not a doctor, I can't prescribe anything, but I can say that in my opinion, it sounds like a good idea to just take it easy on ourselves, physically, mentally, emotionally. And maybe use this time for some introspection and counting our blessings so that maybe after we're done being sick, our perspectives are changed for the better. Maybe we start living, living life a bit more looking at the blessings and calming down and not stressing ourselves so that maybe our brains won't be constipated and then maybe we'll better be able to figure out how to rectify our situations both individually and collectively. I think that sounds like a fucking plan. How about you? So um, to all I've offended, awesome. And to all I've helped, awesome. Because in either case, I'm, I've helped you. Because if you're offended, let's face it, you were looking to be offended. So why watch a video like mine if you're not, you know, look at, if you're one of those people who's offended by this type of content and you know it, and then you go to this type of content and you get offended? Well, I'd still provide a public service because it's what you wanted. And the people that wanted to feel more uplifted and empowered and not offended at all and, and just, you know, 
feeling more like, wow, you know, there's people out there that, that can relate and are talking about this and cool. And so if any of this is helpful, for, for those that this is helped in the positive way, cool. For those that's helped in the negative way, cool. Either way, cool. As long as you've all gotten what you, what you wanted to get out of this video, regardless of what that is, then I'm happy you got it out of it because if you came here looking for something and you got what you were looking for, then hey, I've just provided you with satisfaction. So that's all I'm wanting to do here with that. So just, um, you know, while me being my authentic self in the process, um, I do my best to hopefully um, share with people that what they feel they need. Hopefully, you know. I mean, I can't save the world this, that, and whatever. I'm not going to try to be the cat lady, but in whatever way this benefits, cool. And um, if for any of you this was a zero benefit whatsoever, well, better luck next time, man. So um, I'm going to go rest my throat now. I'm, I'm sure you can kind of hear. So peace out. Catch you later.